Hello friends, when we are learning Selenium or ABM, there are a number of languages by which we can go start learning them. Like it can be C+, your .NET, your Ruby and another languages. But we consider Java because all we, we all know that the importance of the Java is robots nest and its platform independence we all know uh, whether you have learned the Java or not but you must be aware that Java is very important okay it's the widely used accepted language so while learning of selenium and APM we need to learn Java okay because most of the companies and most of the projects are being executed in Java only so that's why we will also be studying with the help of Java only in this sessions I will be covering uh, some concepts or the main concepts of the OOP uh, or we can say the OOP concepts of the Java uh, which will be needing while learning selenium it's not that we need the whole uh, Java whole core Java and the advanced Java we need to learn for selenium no we need the basic Java concepts so we'll be studying through them first of all why the Java independence is called that Java is an independent language Java comes under two uh, I can say they can divide in two parts one is the JDK and one is the JRE if you want to code your program in Java you need to install JDK that is Java developmental kit and else if you only want to execute Java programs you don't want to code them you only want them to be run on your system you need to install JRE that is Java runtime environment every system which needs to execute Java programs okay you need to install JRE on your system suppose this is your code okay and you have these four machines one two three four when we say Java is an independent language, what does it mean? Suppose these are four machines, okay? One, two, three, and four. So what we have is we have for every machine we have JVM installed on that machine. JVM is Java runtime environment. We can say okay Java virtual machine okay Java virtual machine is installed on every machine okay whether this is your Windows this is your Unix this is your Mac this may be your washing machine or whatever this is whatever machine or device it is it is installed JVM that is Java virtual machine so when you write a code it is converted into byte code okay and this byte code can be read by these JVMs in the similar manner okay so if you have a byte code then you can execute this byte code on any machine which has JV for its JVM installed so that comes platform independence this byte code is your platform independent you can execute it on any machine so that's the main part good part of Java is you write the code once convert it into byte code and you can run on in any machine which has JVM so here the power of Java independence scheme unlike in the old uh, or we can say in which the independence is not there we need to have separate compilers 
okay and it will work on that machine only if you are working on different machine you have to the have that compiler and it will work in that permutation combination only unlike if you are working with java you have the bytecode and you can execute it on any machine okay so that is the mean uh, why java is important okay java was uh, developed in 1991 by sun microsystems now it has been acquired by oracle and it is now uh, it is not now called sun it is oracle now okay so let's first see first how to install java on your machine okay go to google and write download java okay this will be the first link that is java.com okay and you can download this that is free java download download this and install it okay so after installing it you will get under your c program files this java folder okay if you open this you will get two folders under it one is the jdk and one is the jre as i have told you jdk is a java developmental kit if you want to code in java and also to execute it plus if you don't want to code you want to only execute your java programs on your system then you need jre we have installed both jdk and jre okay and this is if you go to your command prompt after installing it we need to configure it also if i write here java see it is successfully executed what i mean by successfully executed that no error is thrown it's asking me that what you want to write do with java okay but because i have already configured it when in your case when you have not set the environmental path it should have given you java is not a recognized command to solve this we need to set the environmental variables for this go to my computer click on properties go to advanced system settings go to environmental variables okay and click here new click on new okay and under java variable type java underscore home and under the value give the path of this okay copy and paste it here and click on okay then click on this path go to this bin copy this whole path and go to the end and paste it here okay put a semicolon paste it and click on okay i have already done it so i'm not saving it okay and then click on okay be very much mature when you are make, developing or setting the environmental variables because if you do anything wrong your system will be corrupted okay so under the system variables we do two things first we created one java home and give the path of jdk and then go to the path system variable and give the path till java bin directory okay <coughs> after this if you come and type java here first make sure you close your command prompt and you open it again and when you type java here so it will be giving you something like this okay so this is how you can install and download java okay also if you want to download my system is 32 64 bit if you want to download 32 bit also you can download it from oracle.com i will tell you now tell you from where you can download it at. yeah 
this is the download section just a second Java for developers yeah this is the JDK so you can download it from here also okay so you are, you have various number of resources from which from where you can download the java just google it and you will find okay also this is was how we can download and configure our system variables the next is where we can download we can code our java okay there must be some editor yes we can code under notepad and we can execute our java files but it is only recommended for smaller programs as soon as we will be learning frameworks we will be writing a number of test scripts ok we will be coding the notepad is not handy ok we need some type of editor the famous editor which is used for java is eclipse ok so we need to download the eclipse now for this go to google right download eclipse this is the eclipse in the eclipse instead of the versions what they have done is they have used their planetary system for the naming convention eclipse luna eclipse uh, kepler eclipse uh, like this ok so I will download Eclipse Luna ok yeah Eclipse Mars, Eclipse Luna, Juno so I will download Eclipse Luna jo, ok so you can download it from here go to eclipse.org they have changed their websites uh, yeah this is the download section so from here you can download the Eclipse Luna when you download the Eclipse it is not installed actually when you just a second when you download the Eclipse you will get something like this, a zip file okay when you extract it you will get this Eclipse Luna like Eclipse here okay if you open this you will get this folder so for uh, installing Eclipse is not installed you just unzip it and this is the file so whenever you want to open the Eclipse just double click on it okay and your Eclipse would be open see Eclipse Luna and it is opening make sure you have first install the Java in your system ok then only Eclipse can start also make sure you are using the same bits for the Eclipse Luna and Java if you are using 64 bit for Java then make sure you are using Eclipse 64 for uh, Eclipse ok so it is opening when you open it uh, first time for my case it is showing me or it has already shown these files workspace but in your case in just a second guys yeah in uh, when you'll be opening eclipse for first time it will be asking you for the workspace workspace means from where your all files will need be saved when you are working with Eclipse ok so switch to workspace let's create another so when you open your Eclipse first day you will get this window so just go to D drive and we will create a new e workspace that is learn Java ok 
it's the new folder learn java and click on ok so it is switching to the workspace learn java it is under d drive learn java yeah this is the workspace and eclipse is opening the workspace into it now yeah so it has opened the eclipse now with the workspace this learn java that is what all i will be doing here will be saved under this folder directory learn java okay so this is how you can install java install your id for java that is eclipse okay in the next session we will be start with learning of java concepts okay thank you hello friends let's start with creation of our first java program okay so first let's click on file new and make our first java project let's give our first java name project name that would be let's say java examples okay and click on finish under this there is one source folder source folder will contains all our files and the jre that is the java runtime library if you expand this you will find these jar files jar file is a collection of files okay we can say so this jre contains all the files which are needed for running of java okay under this let's create a new package uh just a second sorry for the interruption guys yeah so everything java in java is done under a package so let's create a new okay so everything is java is done under a package don't worry you will be getting it this in some time so let's name is that my package okay so let's uh, start understanding from here now let's first create a basic program in java for this let's create a new class file okay let's give the name giving give a meaningful name uh, let's say print print text print or we can say print hello world this is the basic program for all the programming languages and check this public static void main and click on finish yes yes let me also increase the font size so that you are able to view it correctly under the general appearance colors and fonts basic and text font mm 14 would be good yeah so this is auto generated text so you see here it is given firstly the package name okay then my class the name of the class was print hello world and the public static void main which i have clicked on checked okay now you must be thinking that what this public are what is this package are what is this static etc are so you will be understanding this during the course of the time we'll be learning java don't try to understand or give stress in understanding what these are because these 
keywords will be taking some time to understand okay for now you need to understand is that whatever in java okay whatever is executed in java needs to be under this public static void main string args okay so the execution starts from java under this okay these are the braces okay this is the name public static void main and these are the opening and ending braces so whatever written and under inside this would be executed by java okay don't and understand what public static just mean that whatever it is in public static void main it is executed okay now we have a command in java that is system dot out dot print ln and if i whatever i write here has i will write hello world it will be printed by java okay if i save this control s and how to execute is you need to click on this symbol that is run if you click on this your java program will be executed and under this console you will find hello world printed if i write my hello world i will update it and save it and i will again run it it has printed my hello world okay so in java whatever we write under system out dot print ln okay it is printed by java i can again write two lines and if i write here this is test file and i save this and i again execute it you see two lines are printed firstly my hello world and the second line this is the test file if you want to print this is a text okay my hello world these are the characters suppose if i want to print some numeric value so for printing of the numeric values we don't need to write inside these curly braces inverted commas so if i write system dot out dot print ln and i can simply write 10 here and the comma if you have write any integer value then i don't need to write these inverted commas save this and run it again see hello world this is test file and 10 one more thing you must be seeing here that this system out dot print ln every next line when i am using system dot print ln it is printing in the new line okay if i don't want to print in new line for this we have a command system dot out dot print ln is for the new line so i can skip the ln part here and i can print here no new line let's save this and run it and see what's printing uh yeah and it, yeah it's no uh, we are not able to identify here is because after this a new line is printed okay so that's why we are not able to see if i write it again here print ln and one and now if i execute it so you see after this printed there is a next new line then this is printed after this there is a new line then 10 is printed after this is printed there is no new line so after this is printed one directly gets printed one is not printed in the new line so you can use 
print or print in command as you want okay there suppose we have to use this print command a number of times system dot out dot print ln system dot out dot print ln so the what the java has done they have made a shortcut for it you simply write s y s o and control and the space bar and you will automatically get this okay this is the shortcut i will just write the shortcut here as well s y s o plus control plus space and you will get system dot out dot print ln okay now what i i these are these are actually the comments suppose you have a code of say 100 lines and you don't know you when you are coding you know that what this line is doing what this logic you have done but uh, so what we do is during coding we write in english language that what these are so that in the future we don't need to always understand the code and then find the logic what i was doing here we can simply comment it suppose i can comment this here this is simple basic java program so in the future when i open this program i will read this comment and identify this oh this was the basic program whatever we write under this comment is not executed by java i can write this line print value 10 okay so in the future when i read this print value 10 okay that the code below this is right printing the value 10 so this is how you can mention the comments these are the single comments that is one line comment suppose you want to enter the comments in four to five lines then we can write this by like this okay i can do comment line 1 comment line 2 so this is how you can write multi comments also this is a single line comment or you can write i have used single line comment two times and then i i have written multiple lines so this is how you can enter comments in java program okay now the second thing is java is a case sensitive language that is i mean by cases that a is different from a both have different meaning for example i we were using system dot out dot print ln okay if instead of capital s if i use small s okay instead of p here if i use capital p so it will throw me an error because java is case sensitive language small and capital letters has different meaning in java also there is a one good example why we have been using eclipse suppose in this command if i have mistakenly written small s you see eclipse have given me an error that system cannot be resolved okay so if i have been using notepad then i would have not noticed this error only when i was running this program this error was thrown but if when we use eclipse eclipse is very smart as soon as we write it start giving an error if there is a mistake so that we can correct it so that is why eclipse is a very good id tool for java because it solves a lot of problems during the coding itself okay also there where this file is i have saved this file where it is saved 
if you right click on it go to properties you will find the path where this file is stored it is under D drive let's see it is under D drive okay learn Java learn Java it is a workspace of our Eclipse under this the project I have made was Java examples you see this was the project I have made Java examples under this source my package and print hello world java this is my file when I run this okay when I run this in the bin there is another file created that is dot class file okay as soon as I build it a dot class file is generated and this is the bytecode I can give this file to anyone and the person can execute it on his or her machine so that is the real power of a Java is if he has installed the Java virtual machine I can give the bytecode and it can execute it on his or her machine okay so that was I think the basic stuff that how we make a program in Java and how what are public static void main what are the commenting in Java in the next session we'll be studying about the various data types involved in Java okay thank you hello friends in this session we'll be learning about the data types which are present in Java okay so for learning this let's create a new class file for Java and when we, we will name it as learning data types and I will include public static void main okay delete this command now what are data types you have been studied chemistry biology or whatever subject it is you always find a statement something these are the building blocks of this element okay so data types we can say are the building blocks for Java for example the basic data type which is available we can say is integer okay now when I say the value 10 suppose my age I want to say my age is 25 okay uh, okay but uh, whenever I want to assign this value I need to write 25 suppose if I want to enter some value let's say 10,241 so I have to again and again write this value so it is possible in Java to store this value inside an object okay that is inside this value in uh, store this value inside a variable okay suppose this is an integer 25 is an integer value okay I say that my age is 25 years plus my age is of integer type okay so this is known as data type this integer is known as data type data type is anything which is telling about in information about our variable this is an age variable which is of data type integer okay is known as a data type we have various type of data types available like this is integer if we have the integer of short length then we use integer if our integer or value is of large then we use long we use long price is equals to 252525 okay suppose I want to use some numeric value if I write here 25.1 this will give me an error let's see it is giving me an error the type mismatch error 
okay because integer cannot store decimal values for storing decimal values we need to use double I write double cost is equals to 25.1 okay so for using of integer values we use double now we can write these values also for example I can write SYSO then control plus space that is con syst uh, system uh, dot print dot ln okay and I can write here H without braces okay if I can write this age here then it means the value 25 let's save this and run this and it has printed 25 here okay I could have also used system dot out dot print ln in the inverted commas I could have used 25 or without if it's an integer value I can use without inverted commas also 25 okay so if I print this run this my program it has printed 25 25 so the power of this variable come is that in suppose next if I write here my age is equals to 29 and if I again use system dot out dot print ln print age now let's see what it print it print 25 25 then my the age was updated to 29 and then it has print 29 so this is how we can work with variables okay so variables can be of integer type if it is of long size we can use long if it is numeric we can use double okay also except this we have one data type known as boolean boolean is for true and false condition okay suppose I can write boolean answer is equals to true so in the boolean we can give true or false for example if I write system dot out dot print ln and if I write here answer let's see what it prints it has printed me true okay I, I can write true I can write false okay let's print yes it has printed false I cannot write anything except true or false some let's say this unknown words it has given us an error the error says tej is not resolved to a variable because the variable is of boolean type and I need to enter true or false okay so considering the basic type of data types we can say it's integer long double boolean and we have characters okay characters I mean we I can write character okay character a is equal to uh, character I can write character name uh, let's say A okay it has given me error because a single character we need to store under single inverted commas okay so in characters we can store single character I can store A capital A I can store B etc let's print this if I write system dot out dot print ln and if I write here character name say I will save this and I will run this it has printed me B okay I can write C here 
and if I again execute this it has printed me C so what we have studied we have studied about integer long double boolean and the care that is character we have others also but for now just study these basic data types okay now let's see how to print those data types okay suppose I have this integer value is equals to 1 if I write system dot out dot print ln and if I give a value here so it would print me 1 okay suppose I want to write some text here as well then how I can use I can write here inverted commas I can say this is the an value okay now this is the text and this is the data type integer so how I can add both of them we can add both of them with the symbol plus if I write plus symbol then both of these would be added that is I can use both of them first when print command will be executed it will first read this on the left start from the left hand side and it will identify yes there is something inside the double inverted commas so it is a text so it will print the text then it will see plus sign okay it is a plus sign so definitely there would be some variable following after it and then it will print the value variable here as 1 okay let's save this and run this to check see this is the value 1 I can give the value 10 save this and again run this see it's working perfectly fine similarly I can write character uh, this was here so I will just use it here system dot out dot print ln value for character and then I will use plus symbol and can name and let's run this the value for character is C because I have assigned the C value here similarly we can use boolean as well this was the variable having data type as boolean and assigned the value as false so I can write here boolean value is and I will use the plus symbol and the answer that is the variable name answer let's save this and run this again boolean value is false okay if I write here true and again run this the boolean values is true so this is how we can print our variables having different data types okay also boolean is used for comparison okay like if I write here integer a is equals to 2 integer b is equals to 2 3 so if I write here system out dot print ln a is greater than 3 a is greater than b then what should be our answer I'll first comment this let's first understand a if 2 is greater than 3 
if I use system dot println and I use inside this is two is greater than three. No, two is not greater than three. Then it returns a boolean value. When we compare two variables here, then it returns a boolean value. So it should be false. Let's see. Yes, it has printed false. If I have written two is greater than one. And if I execute this, true, yes, 2 is greater than 1. Similarly, we can use the operators here. That is these variables a and b. So it will check system.out.println is value of a, that is 2, is greater than th b. No. So it should print as false false okay so this is also how we can use our boolean values if we compare two strings it will return a boolean except this there is some operators known as post increment addition subtraction if you have studied any of the languages C, C++ you must be aware of it okay plus means when we want to add two numbers suppose int x is equals to 1 if I write system dot out dot print ln then I use x plus 5 so the value should be the value of x was 1 and then I added 5 value to it okay so it should print 6 6 Similarly, I can minus subtract some value minus 5. If I execute this, it has printed me minus 4. 1 minus 5 is equals to minus 4. Similarly, there are increment operators. okay suppose there was int i is equals to 1 I will comment this if I write x is equals to x plus 1 so what this mean is that on x plus 1 the x value of x was suppose say 2 okay so 2 plus 1 and assign this value back to x okay so in the x value would be 3 now let's check it let's check the x value is now 3 that is perfectly correct before x value was 2 add 1 to it and then assign this value to x that is 2 plus 1 is equals to 3 so we can also perform this activity with a shortcut we can write here x plus plus okay and it will automatically add plus one to this x value let's run this c3 if i again write x plus plus so it will add again one value to the answer the answer value was three now it will become 4 see so by increment operator we can add plus and minus one value to the answer and similarly we have decrement operator as well if I write int y is equals to 5 and if I use system dot print ln y minus minus that is minus one value to from it and if I use it run it oh sorry Incre decrement operator should be used before yeah see it has printed 4 minus 1 from 
5 and it has printed 4. So this is how we can use various operators in Java. Also we have studied about data types of which the basic ones are integer, long, double, characters, okay we also have one string operate uh, string data type we will be studying in detail in the next sessions okay thank you hello friends in this session we'll be learning about looping concept in java and there are three loops in java while loop do while loop and for loop let's study each of them one by one okay let's start with the while loop so let's first also create one class file and I will name it while loop and I will include public static void main okay now when we say loop what basically loops are loops are suppose uh, when you have to perform an activity let's say you want to print your name one time okay so what you will do we will do system dot out dot println okay and I will name my name is webhub okay so this statement print will print my name is Weber one time if I want to print it 10 times so let's say two times then we will write this statement two times if I run this and it will print two times suppose I want to perform this activity 10 times then how I need to do is I need to write this again and again and again 10 times let's say I want to perform <coughs> which can be done this 10 time but it is a tedious task let's say I want to print this 100 times then I have to write this 100 times that is won't an easy task okay suppose I want to print the table of 5 from 1 to uh, or I want to print the table from 1 to 10 okay for all the 10 numbers then it is not an easiest task to help this it comes the looping concept let's consider this example only I want to print my name 10 times the first method is I'm writing 10 times 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay so this is the first method the second method is we will use loop concept that is while loop for using a while loop we need to first write while okay and a condition which needs which will if it is true it will go under it will execute statement under it is and if it is false then it will exit from it okay let me take a variable int i is equals to 1 okay so I want to what I want to do I want to print this 10 times okay so I'm saying if value of i is less than equal to 10 okay then go under this while loop and print my name is webhub okay so this f while loop has three steps one is initialization that is I have told the spelling is wrong maybe initialization yeah okay first I have to tell initialize the variable from where to start this is known as condition till when you need to execute okay 
start from i is equals to 1 you need to print this till i value is 10 and whenever you print this increment the i value okay this is known as increment operator okay let's make a dry run what basically dry is run that we won't execute this but we will execute on our uh, we can say on a mind or we will execute it ourselves we won't be executing manually so in the starting the value of i would be 1 it will be less than 10 yes and then it will print it my name is webhuff it will print and then i value would be i is equals to i plus 1 i value will become 2 okay now it will go again because the condition is true it will again check if i's value is less than 10 yes it is less than 10 so it will again print my name is webhuff then it will come and it will increment the i value it will make i is equals to 3 then it will go up it will check i is less than 10 yes it is less than 10 so it will print this will continue till i value become till the i value become 10 when the i value 10 it will be check if i is less than or equal to 10 yes it is equal to 10 it will print web of next i value will become 11 it will come under while and it will check if i is less than or equal to 10 no it is not this condition become false so it will come out of this loop and it will continue the execution same so when the condition is true it is gone it is working inside the file loop as soon as the condition becomes false it move out so my name webhub is printed 10 times okay let's execute this see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 it it printed 10 times similarly if I want to print 15 times I will just write 15 save this and I will execute this see so simple also let me print the value of i so it will be very easy system dot out dot print ln and the value of i okay and yeah and let me execute it again see it has executed 15 times so this is the power of looping comes okay so when we are writing this loop we have to make sure this condition becomes false at some point of time if this condition is remains true then it won't come out of this loop for example if I manually instead of while this I write while condition is true okay so what it would be there this condition will always remain true because there is no variable which will become false or not it because it is always true so when I run this it will enter into infinite loop it will keep on printing 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 and while because though I am incre incrementing the i value but I am not checking it here in the conditions let's see if I proceed it's what error it has given me let oh I skip the braces save this and run this you see infinite loop it has gone to thousands nine lakhs now and it will keep on executing it to stop this I have to terminate it manually okay so you have to make sure there is a condition which becomes false when you move want to move out of the while loop okay 
if you want to check it more uh, in depth or you want to debug it like we have done here is manually debug dry run this we have manually dry run this now in the eclipse there is a concept of debug in debug it will like when I run this it will ex it execute in one step in a single go but in case of debug it executes step by step so that we can manually see what is going on okay for running the program in debug we need to first make a point from which we want to start the debugging suppose I want to start the debugging from here let's double click on it when you double click on it there will be a debug icon here okay then I need to open the debug perspective from clicking here I can open various perspectives and I need to click on this debug perspective okay when you open this your debug window will be open you will see this debug point okay now instead of running this we need to click on this debug and click on it as soon as you start the execution this won't be uh, we can say the program won't be continued till the end but it will stop at the debug point the line number 24 it stop and it print all the variables values till now we have used the ith variable and its value is 1 that is perfectly correct we need to press f6 if we continue the execution step by step ok then I will write f6 it has printed my name is Webhub now the ith is equals to i plus 1 the i values is changed to the condition is true okay it has printed i yeah it has printed i now it will print my name is webof click on f6 okay now it's as uh, it will increment the i again click on f6 yes it has print i3 now now if i want to stop the debugging and continue as the normal execution click on f8 and it will continue as the normal execution yeah uh, let me check the symbol yeah step over step 5 yeah symbol is not working F8 yeah the program is executed so this is how you can debug it step by step using this debug perspective it is very much useful in the large pr this it was pretty simple so we were able to understand but when we have large programs we uh, so in that types there are about five to six variables so to keep track of them is very hard so in that case this debug perspective is very helpful now let's move to java perspective back by clicking on this java okay and unbreak point it so this is how the while loop works okay now slight modification to it there is a second loop which is known as do while loop okay let's comment this okay now let's see do while loop as while start from while the do while starts from do okay it is very much similar to do while while loop sorry let's write int we'll be using the same example printing of my name is web of 10 times I will write i is equals to 1 okay what we want to do I want to print my name web of okay 
and I want to do till the value of i is less than equal to 10 and I will increment the value of i i plus 1 and the comma here and save this ok so we are first initializing it ok it's the same thing we are initializing then we are incrementing it ok here we will first initializing then we were checking the condition and then incrementing here we are first initializing then incrementing and then checking the condition ok let's save this and execute it and it has printed 10 times now as we see both are working in the same way then what's the difference the difference is in case of while here the condition is checked before if the condition is true then only it enters the while loop while it case of do while the condition is checked after the end ok so in case of while loop if the condition is false it won't be executed but in case of do while low whether the condition is true or false my name is webber will be printed at least one time because it will be printed then it will be incremented and then the condition will check if the condition is false it will come out of it but it will be executed at least once so this is the difference between while and do while loop ok also uh, we are using here increment operator in the time uh, for incrementing operator we can increment as well as decrement also okay suppose I want to print numbers from 10 to 1 so I can start i is equals to 10 okay i is equals to i minus 1 and till the i is greater than i is greater than 0 and save this and I will print the value of i save this and execute oh it's printed i I have to print the value of variable i ok and now execute it see 10 then it decremented it becomes 9 then it check if i is greater than 0 yes it is greater than 0 so it comes again in the loop then it print 9 then it becomes 8 so you can increment as well as decrement the operator in case of looping concept in java ok now we have covered two type of loops while and do while loop in the next session we will be talking about for loop ok thank you hello friends in this session we'll be learning about for loops we have studied while and do while loops in our previous session <coughs> sorry in this we'll be learning about for loops for loops is the most widely used looping in case of java it is very easy and most flexible so that is why most of them are use the for loop okay let's start create a new class file class file and name as for loop ok I will include public static void main in case of while loop we have seen that <coughs> initialization condition and incrementation is break under three parts ok similarly in case of for loop it is break under three parts but they are executed or written in the same line let's see how what I mean to say I will write int i ok and I won't assign a value to it I will write for 
okay inside the for we'll be using initialization then we would be using in uh, condition and then we'll be using incrementation incrementation or decrementation okay so let's use how we'll be using is for initialization suppose I want to execute the for loop in terms of the value of variable i so I will write i is equals to 1 We'll be using the same example here. Uh, that is, I want to print my name ten times. Okay. Condition: loop till the i value is less than or equal to ten. Okay. And after each loop, increment the value of i. i is equals to i plus one. Okay. What I need to do? I need to firstly print the value of i then I need to print my name is web ok and that's all so here in the for loop we have used initialization condition as well as the incrementation in the single step so uh, let's do a dry run here first i is initialized then its value will be set to 1 it will check if i is value is 10 yes it is 10 so it will print the value of i and the name then it will ch increment it will make the i value is will 2 then it will do the condition check so it works in the same way as the while loop initialization in the starting and then condition and post incrementation in every loop similarly it works in the for loop just the way of representation is different let's execute it to check see if the answer we are getting is right or wrong yes the answer is right it is printing 10 times it is printing the name 10 times okay so this is how we can use our for loop concept in java okay let's work with some advanced java or advanced looping concept that is nested loops we can use one loop inside and another loop okay let's take an example first print table for Two. Okay. So let's uh, first write the table for two. I will write for loop. We'll be using the for loop because it's the most basic and the easiest one. Okay, and it provides a lot of flexibility to update our uh, for writing the scripts and code in Java. Okay. So in case of for loop, I will use first initialization int i i is equals to the table of 2 uh, will start from 1 okay it should go till the value of i is equals to 10 don't worry you will get it when we'll be executing the dry run and i plus plus okay so if i write here system dot out dot print ln in the starting I will write 2 into 1 that is 2 into the value of i that is 1 that is i okay in chai so if we make a dry run here it will what it will say the i value is 1 it should go from 1 I will use the notepad here so how is the 2 uh, table printed 2 into 1 then 2 into 2 2 into 3 similarly 2 into 10 okay so this 2 is constant 
and we are looping this ith value from 1 to 10 ok so first the i value will be 1 it will be print 2 into 1 that is 2 then the loop will increase and i value will become 2 and then it will print 2 into 2 ok that 2 into 2 so similarly we can print the 2 table let's see let's run this yes it has print the value table of 2 from 2 to 20 ok let's make it more uh, good ok so how we can write let's write here that first of all let's print system dot out dot print ln I will print the table for 2 ok now here I will write 2 into the value of i ok plus just a second is equals to this so I actually I want to print in the I want to print in the output like 2 into 1 is equals to answer 2 is equal to is answer is equals to 2 so I want to print this way okay so I am using the concatenation operator plus first I want to print 2 into it's the static value 2 into then the value of i I will be using plus concatenation operator and the value of i then the text symbol equal to okay and the answer so this is where the representation would be good okay let's see it again run this see the table for 2 and it looks very easy to see 2 into 1 2 2 into 2 4 so by using this for loop we have print the value or the table for 2 okay now let's learn nested loops uh, by considering an example okay let's comment this and use an example just a second okay now I want to print table from 2 to 10 okay now I want to print the table for 2 then the 2 will for 3 then the table for 4 okay so I can achieve this with the help of two for loops okay one whole loop will print the value of table and the another loop will print or uh, will work will work for the next table let's see how so this I uh, let me copy this code this code will print me the value of it okay here this value of 2 okay will be getting the number I will be using a variable int number okay number is equal to 2 it will start from 2 here I will be using <coughs> table for num okay and here I will be using num instead of 2 I will be replacing the num everywhere and num okay now let's see this should give me the table for 2 only I have just replaced this 2 with a variable num ok and let's execute yeah it's 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 the same it's working perfectly fine now I want to perform this looping from 2 to 10 for each number for each table I want to print ok so I will use for for num is equals to 2 I will initialize it here 
okay execute till the num is equal to 10 and num plus plus okay so in first case the num value would be 2 it will say the table for 2 and then it will start from 1 and will print the value of 2 table okay then the first the inner loop will be completed okay then it will move in the outer loop i value become 3 3 is less than 10 yes okay then it will print table for 3 and then in this loop it will print the table for 3 let's first execute and check if it's running fine or not I think it's fine table for 2 then table for 3 then table for 4 similarly it's working perfectly fine okay so this is how we can use the nested for loop and we have print the state uh, the table for from 2 to 10 okay also there is a shortcut suppose we have written the co code here and uh, we want to make in proper orientation so there are two ways first you can control a select the whole code and then you can use control i you see it's now systematically used or you can do control a go to uh, indentation yeah control i there is an option here uh, yeah and you can use correct orientation so similarly table can be your code can be so similarly you can make your code look properly so this for loops or the looping concept is very important in java okay mostly whenever you will be coding around 10 to 15 lines you will be using this looping concept okay most of the work in java is done through loops okay because it makes our life easier it uh, help us from doing the activity again and again just make a logic write it here and that task will be performed again and again okay thank you hello friends in this session we'll be learning about the conditional statements in java okay if we say conditional statements then it means if and else statement in java let's start let's first create a new java file okay and i will name it at if else statement okay and i will include public static void main yeah so when we say about conditional statement what it means by conditional statements as the name suggests it means that if the condition is fulfilled then the statement will be executed if the condition is not fulfilled then the statement won't be executed for example let's consider a case if a person age is greater than 60 or uh, let's say if a, a person age is greater than 18 then he can go to the club okay so when I want this statement to be executed that person can go to the club or not I want to check his age this is the condition here okay let's see how we can implement this let's uh, make a variable age and let my age to be 29 okay now I will enter a conditional statement if and inside the if we enter a condition here if age is greater than 18 okay what I want to do I want to print 
allowed to enter club okay suppose if i have not entered this condition here then in every case this line would have been printed allowed to enter the club but now i have put a condition here to check if age is greater than 18 then only person is allowed to enter a club my age is 29 so definitely it's greater than 18 let's see print this allowed to enter the club if i put my age as 9 and save this definitely my age is less than 18 so this statement won't be executed let me output yeah there is nothing output because this print is not uh, executed so nothing is getting in the output so this is how we can execute the conditional statements here we can use the following symbols we can use equals to we can use not equals to we can use less than we can use greater than we can use less than equal to we can use greater than and equal to we can all use all these operators for example if age is greater than and equal to 18 then a person is allowed into the club so if i write the 18 here and save this then the person should be allowed to enter into the club yes allowed to enter into the club so we can use different operators here this is equals comparison it suppose if i write here double equals that it will check age is equal to 18 not equal to this is uh, the not equal to symbol in java this is less than greater than less than and equal to and greater than and equal to so we can use any of these operators in conditional statements okay now as we have an if statement we also have else statement suppose there is a situation the same one that if the person age is greater than 18 then he is allowed to enter the club and if the person age is less than 18 then he is not allowed to enter the club okay so here i can use an else statement that if this condition is true then this statement is executed when this i want to perform some execution when this statement is false so i can use else here else okay system dot out dot print ln not not allowed to enter club okay so if the condition will be true this would be printed and when the condition would be false this would be printed let me put my age as first 20 okay and let me run this it has printed allowed to enter the club because my age is greater than 18 let me put my age less than 18 in this case this condition would be false and this won't be printed hence it else part will be executed else not allowed to enter the club okay let's see not allowed to enter the club <coughs> so this is how we can work with if and else statement <coughs> sorry so if the condition becomes false else part would be executed now there can be some cases in which like here 
if uh, age is greater than 18 then it is allowed if age is less than 18 then the person is not allowed now there may be some cases in which the person may be allowed or we want to check something that if the age is 17 then the person may be or may not be allowed to enter into the club then how I can use those scenarios okay for using those we use else if statement here it is else if or else we can also use else with if to check sub condition and I will write if age is equal to 17 okay if age is greater than 17 I want to print may be allowed to enter club okay so here we have entered an additional condition if age would be greater than 18 this would be printed if age is equal to 17 then this would be printed if age is neither greater than 18 nor it equal to 17 then this would be printed let's see let me put my age as 17 save this and execute it so it is printed may be allowed to enter the club this statement is printed okay also please keep a note of one thing that out of these three statements only one statement when one statement would be execute it will skip the next statement what I mean to say is if this if condition is fulfilled it will execute this and will move out of these block if this else if condition is fulfilled it won't go to this it will move out okay so it from these conditions all these three conditions it will check for the valid condition as soon as the valid condition is found it will move out of if else statement okay now let us take an example let's comment this in this example we will be calculating or will be finding who is the oldest of three persons okay let's take three ages int age a is equals to 10 int b is equal to 15 int c equal to 12 so I want to find the largest number okay the largest number of all these three numbers then how we can use with the help of if else statement okay let's say if if a is greater than B and and operator verifies two conditions and if A is greater than C definitely let's assume if A is greater than this as well as A is greater than C then definitely A is the greatest okay so if A is greater than B and is A is greater than C then <coughs> then what is greatest a is greatest okay next if else if okay if B is greater than C Okay. here if a neither a is greater than b nor a is greater than c then we are checking if b is greater than c okay if b is greater than c then definitely 
B would be the greatest. A cannot be greatest because A here it would be written as false. A is not greater than A, B or neither A is greater than C. Okay, this is not the greater. Okay, from both of these. Now we have compared both of them. Which one is the greater? The one which is greater will be the greatest. Okay. If both of these condition become false, then definitely C would be the greatest one. So this is how we can use conditional statements for finding which one is the largest number. I will use the commas here and save this and let's execute this. It's now printing it B is greatest as well as C is greatest. Can you identify the error, the silly mistake which I have made? Yes. I have forgot to mention here else. So whenever any statement is executing, it is coming out of this loop. Okay, if else and it is printing this. So because I have forgot to mention the else condition. I have told you here also that in this if else statement, only one condition when it is fulfilled it moves out of this loop okay let's execute it now B is greatest definitely it is the correct answer B is greatest it has first checked if A is greater than both of these no then it is checked B is greater than C yes and it has print B is greatest Let's make C is the greatest and execute our test case. C is greatest. Okay. So it is working perfectly fine. Let's comment this and also we can use nested if and if conditions. For example, if I write int a is equals to 10. I can write if a is greater than 10 okay I can again use if condition here if I will use another variable also int b is equal to 9 is equals to 9 so I will write here if B is greater than 5 then print B is greater than 5 else I want to print B is not greater than 5 so see here I have used nested if statements this is my first if statement and this is my second if statement so I would be enter inside second if statement only if my first if condition is true okay like if I have put a is equals to 5 okay so first it will check if a is greater than 10 no it is not so the true part won't be executed okay and it will move out and nothing will be printed let's see yeah nothing is getting printed if I have put a is greater is 15 then for this condition it will be true a is greater than 10 yes then it will check if b is greater than 5 yes b is greater than 5 and it will print b is greater than 5 let's see b is greater than 5 if I write b is great less than 3 that is less than 5 then it would be printed b is not greater than 5 
yeah so similarly we can use nested if statements okay if we can also use nested else statement okay so these if and else will be only executed when the above if comes to be true okay so these were the conditional statements that is if else statements in java thank you in java when we are learning selenium or apm the array is a most important concept in this because we will be storing our test data in the arrays okay so let's start let me create a new java file for learning of arrays uh, a new class file and i will name as arrays or include public static void main and click on finish okay and delete this comment now let's first understand the concept of arrays when i write int a is equals to 10 what it means it declares a variable a of integer type and a value 10 is assigned to it that is if i open the paint then logically what it means in the memory okay this memory is named a okay and a value 10 is assigned to this memory and this a this memory is named as a so this is what we mean by saying int a is equals to 10 suppose us consider a scenario in which you need to store marks marks of the student suppose there are five subjects subject 1 s1 let's name it in subject 2 marks for it is 30 in subject 3 45 in s4 70 n int s5 okay and let's give it 20 so i have declared five variables and have assigned marks to it okay now in the memory how they would be shown is in the memory they will be five variables One, two, three, and five. Okay, this would be your S one, S one. This would be your S two, S three, S four, and S five. So similarly, five variables will be made in the memory, and their corresponding value will be stored. then whatever it is okay so this is how we can work if we want to store 10 subject marks now consider if you want to store marks for 30 subjects okay then how you can do it the first thing which comes into mind is that we will be making 30 variables like this which will go till s30 and we will put the marks inside them but it's it's logically it sounds okay but when we will be doing it manually it would be a huge task because in practical scenarios there can be not 30 50 or 100 of data you want need to store so for storing each data we need to make a separate variable okay and that is a very tedious task so to curb this the concept of arrays came what array says that 
if we are considering this scenario in which we need to store the su uh, five subject marks it says you can declare a variable okay declare a variable subject okay which can store up to five elements new int five what it mean by this is it says that subject is an integer array which can store five integer elements that is now this is your variable is equals to subject okay which can store up to five elements that is one two three four and five that is one two three four five so this variable can store five elements which can be named as okay uh, if I write s here it will be very easy if I'm writing the name okay so this would be your s zero okay the name for this the name for second would be s1 the name for third would be s2 s3 and your s4 like here for five variables we have the name s1 s2 similarly in case of array it start with 0 so it would be s0 1 2 3 4 5 s3 uh, 0 1 2 3 4 because it starts from the 0 so till s4 there would be five elements and we can store then values to it the value of s0 is 10 30 okay and so on so instead of writing this whole procedure we have declared a integer variable which of five elements okay now suppose if I want an integer variable of 50 elements I will just write 50 and it will be extended it will be having s5 s4 s6 x7 s8 till s sub 49 okay one more thing needs to keep in mind is that if I have declared an integer variable okay uh, integer array then all the elements of it would be an integer okay it's not that here I can say I can write some float value 4.0 no I have to write it an integer value similarly we can make character arrays okay a uh, new care of length is suppose 10 I can make string array s tr new string 5 ok so now after declaration of these arrays let's see how we can put data to it ok let's consider our integer example only how I can write I can write s0 ok the value of s0 is let's suppose 10 ok s1 ok that these are called the indexes so at the s0 is index put value 10 s1 index put the value 30 s second index this one as second index put the value 45 then as third index 
this third index put the value 70 okay and s4 index put the value of 20 so this is how we have entered the variable uh, values for these indexes okay 45 and then 70 and 20 okay so this is how we can enter the value in the array now I want to fetch this value I have initialized it. suppose I want to check the value for it either I can use like this system dot out dot print ln okay the value for s and this index who zero okay if I print this it has printed me 10 okay that is this the array as at index 0 the value is 10 okay similarly I can also print for let's say s 1 at 1 index and if I print it the value comes to be 30 that is perfectly right also instead of writing this I can write a for loop we have studied the for loop I can write a for loop for iterating all these elements and displaying them for this let's say int i let's i start from 0 and I will write a for loop for int i uh, I will write ok I will start from the 0 I will start from the 0 index and I want to go till fourth index that is I is less than 5 ok and I plus plus and what I need to print I need to print the value ok so the value would be S and I ok so in the first case I value would be 0 and it will print S0 that is 10 in second case I will be 1 it will be printing S1 that is 30 similarly it will be printing all the values of the array let's see yeah 10 20 45 70 and 40 we can make it more uh, smart in the smart looking way I can write system dot out dot print ln can write value at put index what the index donated it is index is this ith value i ok is and what would the value is the value is s i ok i gives the ith position ok and s i gives the value at that position so it will print value at index this is its value let's see run this now see it's look now more formatted the value of index 0 is 10 index 1 is this 3 is this 4 5 ok so similarly there are 5 elements ok and yeah. one more thing we don't know currently that uh, uh, there was an array of 5 elements ok so when I'm writing the for loop I should know in advance to what the length of the array is ok because I I want to make sure the number of times the array is looped ok Java provides one way by which we can calculate the length of this array we should not be knowing in advance that the value is 5 but there is a way by which we can that is I can write length 
system dot out dot print ln that is length of array is and what the length is the length is s dot length this will print the length of the array let's see the length of the array is 5 that is perfectly correct it start from 0 but there are total 5 elements 1 2 3 4 5 and that is perfectly right so instead of writing 5 here I can also use till i is less than s dot length and save this and execute and it is perfectly right okay so we can use s dot length to fetch the length of an array one more thing guys there is a one drawback of arrays the drawback of array is that we should know in advance that how much length array we need okay like when we we were declaring this array integer array as we have to write in before that what it length is five elements okay so this is the drawback because that we need to know in advance we can accept all the data types okay I can write obj with index 0 integer value 1 okay obj 1 is equals to let's say my name way above okay so you see this array has taken the integer value as well as it has taken the string value so if we want an array which can accept multiple data types then declare a variable or declare an array of object data type instead of integer okay so currently what we were studying was integer arrays or we can say one dimensional arrays okay why we call one dimensional because they stretches from left to right they are in one dimensional that is I can take five elements array 20 elements but it would be in a linear way now there is an another type of array that is known as double dimensional array let's see how its representation is double dimension array we can say is an extension for one dimension array okay just a second guys yeah sorry for the disturbance guys okay so one two dimensional array how we can make them is this is an box if I made something like this okay and suppose there are five elements one two three four five so this is your one dimensional array okay one dimensional array having five elements if we repeat this okay if we put several one dimensional arrays together then it becomes two dimensional array let's say this and okay so this is your two dimensional array that is one dimension that is three one dimensional arrays that is first one dimensional array second one dimensional array and third one dimensional array okay we club the one dimensional arrays and it becomes our two dimensional arrays okay so similarly we can do the indexing here okay how it is done this has zero zeroth row first row second row okay similarly as in one dimension array zero index one index two index three index and four index 
okay so if I want to calculate the index values for these two dimensional LA then what it would be let's consider first block it would be zero row and zero column that is zero zero okay for this it would be zero one for this it would be zero low and second column okay for it would be zero row and third column for it it would be zero row and fourth column similarly for this row it would be zero row oh second row zero column okay that is zero row and first column so similarly these are the index values for each cell let's make uh, in uh, a double dimensional array so we can better understand its working let's create a new java file and I will write add two two dimensional arrays okay I will two I will include public static void main okay and how we can declare a double dimensional array let's create an integer double dimensional array I will write integer s okay is equals to new integer 5 by this we have declared a one dimensional array this okay how we can declare a two dimensional array instead of single one pair of braces we write two pair of braces this denotes a double dimensional array and this is the column 5 how many rows we want we want three rows so I will write here 3 so this is how we can write a double dimensional array firstly instead of single pair of braces we write double pair and first we write the number of rows we want I want three rows and five columns that is I want three rows and five columns let's assign value to them that is s zero row I want to zero row and zero column zero row and zero column I want to assign value let's say a or I will write 1 okay now to this value this would be my first row okay now to the second column that is 0 row and first column the index would be 0 1 the value I want to assign is 2 similarly for others that is 0 2 the value would be 3 okay and s 0 row and third column the value would be 4 okay s 0 row and fourth column the value would be 5 let me give a more value similar to as index value so it would be very good at representation also 0 1 0 2 0 3 and 0 4 okay similarly for the second row okay so I can write the values by this or I can write a for loop for entering of this value how I can write a for loop let's comment this I have to use two for loops one for loop will give me the row number and for each row I want to enter five values so one loop will iterate through the row numbers and the another for loop will iterate through the column number let's see how I can do this I can write for okay, integer I will use row num okay 
row num start from zero okay the row star is starting from zero and till when it should go it should go till two that is row number okay row number less than equal to two because there will be three rows zero one two and row num plus plus so initially I will be under the first row okay I will also print here cur row row number is and what the row number is row number is row number so when this for loop will start the row number will be 0 and it will print row number is 0 now sorry for each row I want to input these of 5 columns that is for each row I want 5 iterations so I will write an another for loop here ok and I will write int column num ok column num and column num should start from 0 till 4 so I will write 0 and column num should be less than should be less than equal to 4 and column num plus plus ok and I will input so this will iterate will five elements and I will input the value or I will print it here SYS okay I will be using this for loop for printing of these values not inputting them okay and I will write S what would be the index for this it the row number would be the same so I will write here row number and what would be the column number column number will change as per the for loop this column number ok and it will print the value ok so let's do a dry run ok first of all first for loop will come row number 0 it said ok the row number is 1 then it will go into the second loop it says that I will start from 0 till 4 5 elements and it will print the value of row this and column this then row this and column this and it will print the values ok so let's input the value with this manually and we will print it through for loop this was our first row ok and our second row second row will be row number 1 and the column start from 0 ok row 1 row 1 row 1 and row 1 and the value would be one zero one 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 two one three one four and similar I will input the value for third third row this is second index okay it might be confusing but don't be confused because in the array the elements start not from the zeroth index but from the zero uh, not from the one index but from the zeroth index okay so it would be second index second index second index and second index and the value would be second row second 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 so we have inputted all the values in the array using manual and we will be printing it 
with the help of a loop okay and let's see I'll run this and it's perfectly right it's saying the row number is 0 okay first the row number was 0 okay just a second guys yeah in first case the row number was 0 and it has printed row number 0 and all the corresponding values that is 1 2 3 4 5 okay then the row number again this for loop will come row number will become 1 okay this and it will print all the values of this column as it will iterate it through the columns and it has printed 1 0 1 1 1 2 and similarly for the row number 2 okay so this is how we can do or work with the double hello friends welcome to this session in this session we'll be learning about the backbone of Java or we can say we'll be learning the class and object concepts of Java okay to understand it better let me start with an example consider that we have a God definitely it is uh, if you believe okay so God make us that is human beings okay God makes boys and God make girls okay so if we start creating uh, like human beings have very common properties that they have two eyes one nose two hands etc many other properties the humans can walk they can run etc now when God is designing a single person okay he create for example he took seven days to create a human being now he create another person so if, if he works from the starting without any help from the first one it takes 10 days again so the God was intelligent what he do he made a skeleton or a template for creating Hoopan means okay so he whenever he wants to create a human being he uses that template gives some values which are specific to every human being suppose my height is 6 feet and another person height is 5.6 feet so he gives specific values of that particular human being okay and he creates a human being in let's say a one day this is how he save his nine days so similar is the concept for class and objects okay let's study more okay this is your class these are your four objects okay yeah this is your class just a second guys my paint yeah it's working fine yeah so I can write here is this is my class okay these are my four objects or I can say this is my class that it human class human and these are my four human beings one is boy okay boy one and he is hmm, we say object okay now just wait for a second you will understand it why I'm writing this boy boy two okay this is girl 1 and this is girl 2 okay so 
to make these human beings what god does he make a skeleton for it okay he says that every human being will have a specific height okay every human being will have a specific weight okay every human being will ha these are the maximum okay that the person would have maximum height of this when the god was creating he mentioned these values okay when uh, every human being will have its max uh, hair length <laughs> seems funny but it just for learning okay also he says every human being can run okay he make a function every human being can walk he make a function every human being has some physique okay so these are the values so he says he made a skeleton that every human being will having these three type of variables height weight and hair length and also every human being will be having these three type of functions that a person can run walk and his physique okay okay so what god does it uses this template and created its one of his objects and name it as boy one and he says it height would be 6 feet his maximum weight would be 60 his hair length is 2 cm he can run okay he can walk okay and what and he has some physique okay so he created his first object now god wants to create an another boy so he create an another object and he says okay his height would be 5 weight would be 50 hair length would be let's say 4 cm the person can run the person can walk and the person has physique okay so this is how we can make objects so the best uh, uh, or we can say the advantages of using the class object model is that we have seen here that we can create n number of objects of this class and it's saving us a lot of time because we don't need to create these functions again and again suppose i have written here god has written here in the run function the logic of run how a person can run so i have to merely when i make object for it so it will automatically get this run function okay so this boy will know that how to run these objects will know how to run okay so this is how we can create classes and objects what the concept of classes and object is now let us practically execute this to see how these objects and classes are made in java so let's yeah let's open our eclipse let me make a new class okay and i will name it as human okay and i will include public static void main okay this is down so this is my class human now let's go to this chart uh um yeah and create this class with these values a skeleton with these values okay so my class human has height okay so it it can have height this class this class can have weight that is int weight it has int hair length now three functions one is run the per it oops sorry 
okay these are the three variables now this human can perform three functions that is three activities one is public void and the function name is run and this run can perform some activity for the sake of learning let's write print something that is this human can run okay the second function would be public void wall walk that is walk okay and in this print this human can walk now the third function is physique so we will write public void physique okay and what would be the physique physique would be the adding of these two values that is height plus weight so I will print this value human physique is okay and it would be height plus weight okay these functions can use these variables okay so I have created a template okay this is my public static void main in which my code whatever code I write will execute it okay now let's start with creating the first object okay so the first object would be boy1 so for creating an object I need to write human the class name then the object name boy1 and new again class human now what I mean when I'm writing this okay let me show you in the memory what happens in the memory some space is allocated okay this space will be equal to this okay so when I write this code this space is allocated okay and it is named as boy1 okay and this space it can be referenced or called by this boy1 okay so this is what happened this new human will create this space in the whole memory okay in the java memory this space will be allocated and this boy1 means that boy1 will be an object that will be pointing to this memory location so now I have created one object boy1 now what I can write I can give this boy1 okay can have some height so I need to enter the height so boy1 height is 6 feet okay 6 yeah now the boy1 can have some weight okay the weight was 60 kgs the boy1 can have hair length the hair length was 2 apart from this the boy1 can run okay the boy1 can walk the boy1 has a physique okay so let's save it now it was so simple for God to create a boy he simply create an object for class human and enter these values and a human being will be created with this height weight and hair length okay so I can now add add number of properties okay here and just give values and my human being will be prepared it's a type of factory it will be so the human being will be created in a factory 
let's execute this okay and see what's its print also I will after f writing this height this and this I will write as system dot out dot print ln uh, height also I will check if it is allocating the memory or not correctly height is boy one dot height okay system dot out dot print ln the next is weight and the weight would be boy one dot weight okay and the next would be hair length okay hair length and it would be boy one dot okay and the next would be hair length okay hair length and it would be boy one dot hair length and now save this and execute and it's perfectly correct first we have initialized these all three variables of the class then I have executed this run function and it has printed this human can run the next statement I executed was boy1.1 that is the human can walk similarly the physique the physique was addition of height and weight so whatever the height and weight I have given it has added to it has given 660 because it's giving 6 plus 660 if I write under the braces then it I will get a correct result okay now execute it yeah it's giving me 66 and by these three print statements we have verified that the height weight and the hair length are correct similarly I can make an another object boy2 okay copy this and the boy2 was having these details okay we will create a similar one I will write boy2 okay and boy2 height is 5 feet his weight is 50 that is boy2 boy2 hair length is 4 centimeters and same thing and I will write some identification to make a separator between both of them okay let's save this and execute yeah so now the god simply copy pasted entered some values and he created another boy now I'm giving this result because I need to write object name boy2 not boy1 okay boy2 boy2 and boy2 save this and execute yeah similar so, you see now the height weight and the length hair length are showing for the boy2 so that is the concept for classes and objects and we can create any number of objects as per our skeleton okay so you can also get that the class was merely was in a skeleton which has some variables as well as some function we say properties okay and we can make objects for it also I will just want to tell you uh, there uh, the memory allocation for objects okay just a second where's my mouse yeah suppose I have let me comment this okay let 
watch me comment this. Let me create three objects that is human H sorry. Yeah. Human H one is equal to new human okay and this human has a height okay we will only enter height else everything will remain default that is zero okay his height is 10 okay create a, another human being human 2 okay new human okay human 2 dot height is equal to 20 now and the human h3 the third human okay new human and his height would be 30 okay so how this is allocated in a memory okay there will be three memory locations okay now in this location human one is pointing to this location human two is pointing to this location and human three is pointing to this location now if I write some coding like this human 1 is equals to human 3 human 3 is equals to human 2 now what it means now it says that human 1 will be pointing to the memory of h3 that is now human 1 won't be pointing to this but human 1 will be pointing to the memory to which the human 3 is pointing okay now human 3 will be pointing to the memory of h2 that is human 3 won't be pointing to this location but human 3 will be pointing to this location okay now let's verify this first here print the value for all three human height okay h1 dot height okay the second one would be h2 dot height okay third would be h3 dot height okay and after swapping of these memory location let's print it again so in first case it should be print 10 20 30 while in the another case now h1 is pointing to this allocation so this was having initial value 30 10 20 okay so it now h1 is pointing to 30 and h2 and h3 are pointing to 20 let's see if the answers are correct yes first is printing 10 20 30 and the next time it is printing 30 20 and 20 okay so Hello friends, in the previous session we have learned about the classes and the objective concept and how they are located in memory. In this session we will be learning about a very good concept that is known as constructor in classes. Okay, So let's create a class okay, and name it as a car, include public static void main okay and it has a variable wheels count okay and the second variable that would be um, uh, headlights okay number or let the wheel count and the yes
let it be okay number of headlights it's, it's not good <laughs> uh, or what I can say uh, the number of seats okay the second can be int Let it be Windows. Okay. Now and a function public void start and in this function we would be printing car is starting okay now this is a class car which has three variables in number of seats and a function that is car is starting so now let's create an object for it our first object would be car c1 is equals to new car okay Vari values will be car which yeah car1 wheels count would be 4 okay car1 number of seats would be 4 okay and the wind car1 dot windows would be let's say 6 okay now let create an another object that is car c2 okay new car okay and the car 2 wheels count wheels count would be 4 okay and car 2 dot number of seats would be 4 and car 1 windows would be 8 now the one thing common in both the objects you must be seeing the win which, uh, the wheels count and the numbers of seats whether it's any car whether it's a BMW Porsche Maruti sedan or whatever car it is it will always have wheel 4 and also we are considering that the number of seats in every car would be 4 okay so whenever we are creating an object of car we are unnecessarily writing these two lines okay Beca because we know that in every car the wheels count and the number of seats would be 4 okay though the windows count can be changed okay so to help this to don't give the default values of each variable there is comes the concept of constructors okay let us comment this and this and see what are the constructors constructors in the class okay there are some uh, I can say points which should be remembered while creating the constructors one is the constructors are created inside the class okay constructors created inside class constructors oops have same as class name and constructors don't have return type okay so I can write here public but I can not use void 
if I use void here that is the return type then it will become a function it won't be a constructor so I cannot use a return type plus the constructor should have the same name that is of the class that is I need to write here car and the braces okay and here I can give the values let me write it after the variables it will look pretty good okay and here I can write the value of wheels count should be equal to 4 okay and number of seats should be equal to 4 so what happens is whenever any object is created we write new car so what this new car does it it creates a location in the memory and also it runs the default constructor that is this default constructor without any arguments now there must be one question that when we have not created this constructor then how it was working what Java is pretty smart so when there was no default constructors Java created itself a default constructor and executed a code now we have written the constructor so it will use our constructor our default constructor now if I write here if I check here okay system dot out dot print ln value for uh, wheels count okay we have not initialized it here okay let's also check the value for c1 number of seats okay and system dot out dot print ln c1 dot windows okay this was our first object and the second object let's copy and paste this okay and now run this you see in both the cases the num count the windows count is changing but the number of wheels and the number of seats remains the same that is they are defaultly initialized to the value of 4 this was because when we created the object the default constructor was created and our code was executed okay now let's consider another case in this case we want that this is a default value okay now with the help of constructors I want to say that the number of seats sorrow sorry in the the car can has the number of seats 4 or the number of seats can be 5 I want a constructor for it okay then we can write an another constructor that is public car and it would accept one argument int number okay and in this it will say wheels or number of seats is equals to 5 okay so I have created a constructor in which if I enter any value it will assign the number of seats equal to not 5 but number okay so let us comment this and copy this okay so I have done this to remove this hodgepodge okay and this this yeah so if I write this then defaultly both these wheels count and number of seats will be initialized to 4 but I want the number of seats to be 5 that is instead of default constructor I want to run this constructor then how I can do this 
instead of default constructor I will enter some value 5 now the Java would instead of calling this default constructor it will call the constructor which is having one integer adds is argument okay now let's see and it will assign the number of seeds equal to 5 okay now let's execute yes the wheels count is 0 it is not 4 because in this case default constructor was not executed okay so it was 0 number of seats is, is equal to 5 because this constructor was called 5 was given here and the number of seats are equal to 5 and the windows remains the 6 if I write the number of seats equal to 7 and save this and I run this then it would be 7 so this is how you can skip the pet parameterized constructor also I can write a constructor like another constructor with different argument if I write constructor car okay and I pass two arguments one is integer a and then is integer b okay and I can say wheels wheels count is equals to a value and number of seats equal to b so I have created an another constructor this part in which we can create the constructors having the same name the written type is also the same that is does not exist and different arguments this concept is known as constructor overloading okay that the all the con the constructors of the same class which has different arguments okay when we are doing this this is known as constructor overloading so I have tell if I and tell if I call a constructor with two arguments then this will be called okay so if I call here one comma two in this case our this constructor would be called okay let's execute this yes in our case wheel count is coming one seven and then six and that is perfectly right okay so this is how you can work with constructor there is one one concept in constructor known as copy constructors in which in the arguments we can call constructor uh, or object itself for example I can like public car and inside the car the arguments can be int string etc also one more thing the constructor here int int and if another constructor is int and string both are different constructors okay so if so if I write int int then this constructor would be called if I write something int and string value then my another constructor would be called okay so every constructor name class name with different arguments is a different constructor now back to copy constructors here I can pass the constructor uh, our class object our class is car and the object is C okay and I can assign the values that is wheels count is equals to C dot wheels count just hold for a minute your concept would be clear okay number of seats is equals to C dot number of seats okay. now let us consider this example in which we have one c1 object or uh, okay and we have assigned one seven and six value let's create an another object c2 okay and new car 
instead of writing the default constructor and the other constructors we have to use this copy constructor reference constructor in which we need to pass the object of this class so we will pass c1 okay what this constructor will do we will pass this c1 constructor and we are telling whatever the value the c1 has assign it to this c2 okay so if i write this okay it will print me 1 and 7 only let's see 176 and 17 again so this is known as copy constructors reference copy constructors that instead of we are passing here the class object itself to the constructor okay and we are using this object uh, this is the local variable and we are assigning the object variable to this construct uh, objects variable okay so this is pretty easy so when you execute or will be doing selenium two or three times when you code this this will be clear it's not a hard topic it's just you are getting this first time so it's we uh, it may you may feel that it is pretty tough no you code two three times and it will be pretty easy and guys don't think that watching this videos you can learn you have to actually code in order to learn it okay watching this videos won't help you to be become a tester or a java expert okay thank you guys hello friends in this session we'll be learning about the concept in for looping that is for each okay so i have made a class for each and let's start <coughs> i will make an array an integer array okay we have studied about the arrays i will name it as value and uh, i will give some values to it okay let's give me it three values 11 22 and 33 sorry uh this it's an integer not an string okay and <coughs> new int right and so i want to get the value of these three elements using a for loop the first method is that i know that what all the three values are int 0 int 1 and int 3 now i want to get these with or values how i can do i can get it with the help of for loop okay let's make a for loop i will write for int local variable i i is equals to 0 and i is less than value dot just a second I want go on to go to loop till the size of this array that is value value dot size sorry it would be length l for the array it has length and I want to go i plus <coughs> plus so what I will print I will print system dot out dot print ln and the value that is value <coughs> and and its index value okay would be i so in first case the index value would be 0 so it will print the value 11 in second case i value will be 1 that is this one it print 22 and then 33 let's execute it to see if it's running fine okay and run as a java application and it's running now what it does java provides alternate for this for loop okay that is called a for each loop it say instead of write using this local variable for each what it does it removes this local variable unnecessary use of the local variable 
in that we will write for actually not <coughs> remove this uh, sorry I was made a mistake not removing this uh, variable but somehow made making it easy okay how so instead of this I will write int i the value I want to iterate and this value okay and I can use system dot out dot print ln <coughs> simply I and let me print this and it print correctly okay so both of them have given the same output but we have reduced it shortly okay in this case it feels that no it's not reduced much but when we are working with advanced java okay when we learning selenium we have to use various functions various iterations so in that case this value is very helpful because in this case we don't need to get the length of this value here we need get the length but in the cases we do don't have the length it's dynamic then this is very really useful okay and just for the now just understand how the for each works okay the usability point of view will be covered in the later sections okay so that's all for uh, for each loop thank you hello friends in the previous sessions we have learned about the arrays now there is one problem with the arrays that is during the initialization phase you have to tell how big the array is okay suppose there is an array of five elements and during the course of your programming you need to extend that array then there is no solution for that okay so to uh, help with this problem Java came with the another concept that is dynamic arrays okay when we say dynamic then in that comes a various number of arrays like uh, array list, hash map, set, etc. So in this session we'll be learning about array list. Okay. Let me create a new class for the array list. Okay, I will name it as array list demo. Public static void main. Okay. And how we declare array list? For this I will write array list okay and I will name it as array is equals to new array list mm, I need to first import it uh, from java.util package okay now let me remove this now I am getting a what we say a warning type of warning that array list of raw type okay it should it refers to generic type this should be parameterized okay this is correct but when we are defining the array type we should define its type for example when I say the array of integers okay so similarly here also I need to define that it is a array list of integers or it is an array list of strings or any other things okay so I am making an array list of string okay and here also the array list of string and you will see this er error will be removed okay now it's saying that it's not used but that error is removed now now this it's a dynamic array I have not given its length here now when I need to add values to this array then how I can do is I need to type array the name of this array list dot add okay using the add I can add values to it let me give it a dummy name a okay if I need to add another member I will write add let's say B okay and array dot add C so I have entered three members to it and save this now 
let us print this to verify if these elements have been allocated or not okay so I will be using for each which we have studied in a previous session okay it's of string type so I will write string str okay and the array and what I will do I will print my value I will write str okay let's save this and execute okay and a b c that is correct to the array list I have added three elements so now what's the dynamic next is this is later on during the program if I want to add an another member I will just put add another member suppose now what I can do I can again do array dot add 4 uh, let's see D okay and if I again print it let's come in this okay I can again print it so that is the power of array list let's see yes okay now there is an another thing about that you can add members at the specific location okay this is location 1 2 3 not the index but the location is 1 2 3 4 suppose I want to add something after the second location then I can use array dot add and I can use this okay that is to what position I want to add and what the value suppose I want to add a dash only a string dash and save this and let me print it again okay and let's see run this as a Java application you see at the second location after the second location it has put a dash here so you can add the elements at this end also and to the specific location also now I can delete the values from here as well I can either use array suppose I want to delete this value so I can use array dot remove okay first the integer value suppose I want to delete from the second position okay and print this so in this I have given the position it has removed it right there is another method to remove okay let's comment this the another method is I can remove with the name okay that is the value so I can give here value dash so it will remove it let's see run this so the dash must be removed yes it has removed so it works you can add you can d uh, delete from specific location through value through position and anything okay now let us see let me comment this as well okay now what I was saying before was if I don't put string here then what would happen okay if I don't put string here let's see then it defaultly becomes the array list of objects now what the object object is the base class for Java every class whether it's string or integer or anything it's extending the object class so in the objects you can add string anything so inst and I put some values so in that object I can add integer I can add string okay okay now instead of string here I will yeah, 
I will use object and let's see it should work now this is the array list which is having both the integer as well as the string value though it is not recommended it okay and the Java itself is saying that it's an error okay so it's though it's not giving an error it's give a warning that this is not recommended it okay it's giving you multiple markers it please do this but it's not an error uh, let's run this see it has printed one and a so this array list is accepting both the integer as well as your string type so that was all for the array list in the next session we'll be covering about hash maps okay this array list and hash maps are very important topics when you are coding or doing any framework or anything these are the features which will be used extensively in your programs okay thank you hello friends in the previous session of dynamic arrays we have seen array list in this session we'll be learning about the hash maps okay so i have created one class hash map demo okay and i included public static void main and let's create a hash map of variable so i will write hash map okay so and in this hash map I have to give a key and a value okay in the array list we add the uh, what can you say the values that is the if you are adding the names I will add Vabhav, Rahul etc in this we add the keys okay so in this case all the keys and values I am making them as string okay I can give them as integer or whatever I can as we have seen before and the value would also be a string okay so I will make an variable hash is equals to new hash map okay string string okay now uh, how we put values in a hash map for that I need to write hash in the array list we use add but in case of hash map we use put put and the key and value pair suppose the key is that is my name what its value its y valve okay hash dot the next value key and pair that is my number and the number would be let's say one two three next hash I want to put my address or I can say city or country okay and I would give India okay so similarly I define the key and value pair okay so in case of hash map in case of array list we only give these values so there we can only get those values by their index value but in case of hash map we can get this value using the key value okay I can give give me the value of that uh, data whose key is name so it give me web of okay so how I can do this I can write hash dot for getting it we use get get the value of that pair whose key is name and let me print out this as far as system mode dot println and what it will fetch me it would fetch me where so it will uh, fetch me the name that is web of okay let's run this to see okay web of that's perfectly right now suppose I want to fetch all these details let me comment this I want to fetch all the details on my hash map then how I can do it 
there are two methods first is the hard method will you feel the hard it is okay so let's start with the difficult one is the saying when you are learning or anything or doing anything always start from the difficult one okay and don't try with the easiest one okay because in that case you will always left out the hard part so always try from the hardest part okay so let's start so i will make an iterator iterator is for iterating the elements okay so i will make an iterator string okay for i am making this iterator for the key values okay this for iterating these all key values i will import the libraries and i will give the name as iterator and i want to iterate through its key set i want to iterate through this key set okay and i will iterate it so it will give me all the key set values to this iterator okay and then i will use a for loop and i will iterate through all these elements i will use while iterator has has next has next verifies if the next element is present or not okay and then i will use string key okay and iterator dot next so what this and this is this iterator checks if the next element is not null okay and this navigates to the next element for example if i use a for loop so consider this as if i Uh, is not equal to null, and this is equal to the current value. Okay, if i is equals to zero, one, two, three. So after this, I will print out the key and value. That is system dot out dot print ln. What would be my key? The key value the, in the starting. It the key value would be the name plus some space key. okay and what the value would be value would be hash using the same i have the key value now to get the hash value i will use hash dot get key so it give me the key value and that's all okay so just one again I have used an iterator for iterating all of these key sets. Used a while loop in which I am first checking if iterator next element is present or not. If it is present, then I am getting its key value, and then I am also getting its value. Okay, and uh, let's see if it is working fine or not. Yes, it's fine. Uh, let's me check. Uh, yeah. it's the name the web of country is uh, number is 1 2 3 and the country is india okay so this is how you can get its values okay now the second method which is the easiest one second method okay so in this we will be using the for each method okay which we have studied before i will use for I want to iterate to this hash. Okay, so I will get this element. Okay. Uh, okay. So like in this, we were using not that. If we in the previous case, we are using a key set for iterated or the key values. So similarly, we call this as a entry, and we will be using the entry for getting the entry set. That is for each of this element. This key set gives the key numbers. Entry set give me the combination of these. Okay, so what I will write, I will write the entry for string string. Okay, and the entry object, and what I will come to iterate through, that is hash with 
entry set okay I will import this entry that is Java dot map okay so what I have done and in the previous case I was getting the key set value in this I am getting both of these key set value that that is known as entry set and what I will do I will just simply print it I will be using entry dot get key okay and and entry dot get value okay and this would work perfectly fine let's execute yes and that's perfectly right so this is how we can use hash maps okay this hash maps and I'm again saying hash map and array list are important topics uh, if it's not cleared just try it one two times and when you will be using in your project it will be more clear because in that case you will be getting a practical example for it okay in this case I have taken the dummies values here but you will exactly know what their uh, feature in the programming is so just understand the concept a roughly idea how to execute them when you're going through the selenium or APM okay when I be using this concept that would be more clear okay thank you hello friends in this session we'll be learning the most used feature of Java that is interfaces we have studied about the classes and now the interfaces now what basically the interface is I will explain you with the help of an example okay so suppose God is there okay and God let's consider or it's a truth if you believe in God okay <laughs> uh, God creates us all human beings okay now God is very busy person himself and if and we also know every human being differ in itself okay now he cannot make all of us so he hired some employees okay who are making human beings okay so he has a staff who is making us all now what God does God make a file here okay or I can say God made an interface okay and he said that to his staff that every human being which you are making make sure he has eyes okay he she has nose okay hands legs etc also the person can run okay the person can eat so these details so God says that you have to define these okay you have to make that a person has eyes nose hands legs the person can run the person can eat so now all his staff is using this value okay or using the list and making the human beings okay so let's say this is a human one okay this is human 2 similarly human 3 okay so what uh, the first person do he may take okay uh, it has eyes hands legs okay suppose he said that okay run now how the person should run he defines okay run he says uh, can run fast okay this person can run fast okay in the second human he made run slow okay and for the third person they make run uh, fastest okay so God has tell them that you have to give this feature now how and 
how to give this feature that totally depends upon the staff okay let's say eat the person all three person can eat but how to implement that eating depends upon them okay so god is not creating human beings it suppose is creating the dogs cats etc so he eats veg okay he eats non veg okay so similarly so this template okay since this template is known as interface and anyone who is inheriting this template any class which is inheriting this template is bound to implement all these functions okay so every staff if he is extending this interface are bound to give all these values okay i any staff cannot uh, make a person who cannot eat no if he is using this template then he, the person should able to eat how that eating should praise what it should eat that should totally depend upon the staff but this feature should be there so this is interface now hope you have get it okay uh, similar example can be of car we know that the car has four wheels one horn uh, one steering etc now these are the basic feature now we have mercedes we have maruti we have porsche we have uh, any other car okay so the how to implement this cars okay maybe the mercedes have good music system in terms of porsche maruti ha is economical in terms of another cars so definitely all those have four wheels okay but what quality of the wheels length of the wheels breadth of the wheels that and the tires totally depends upon the mercedes porsche and uh, maruti but definitely they would be having four wheels because that is defined in an interface and every these brands of a car are using those interface okay hope you have got this let's make an interface okay and you will get a good learning about it so let's make a class uh, now this one thing to make an interface i don't need to make a class now i have to make an interface this one okay and i will name it as uh god uh interface okay and what i will say uh this person has int i is equals to 2 person will have two eyes and nose is equal to 1 okay now every this interface will have some function for human being the person should run okay have a right public void run okay and the person can eat you see i am just declaring the functions here i am not telling that what run should do and what eat should do okay and i will save this by default the variables defined in the interface are static and final you cannot change them afterwards and all the functions okay these are abstract abstract means they are skeleton they don't have the body part i am not telling what this function can do okay now let's see how we can use this interface now let's make a class and i will name it as man and i will use public static void main okay and what this man can do this man extends which class god interface okay so i need to import this also so i will write import my package okay and then this interface 
okay and interfaces are inherited okay in just a second guys sorry <laughs> interfaces are uh, implements I just can yeah so many things I'm doing so <laughs> so it implements God interface okay now it's giving me an error now let's see what an error is it's saying if you are implementing this interface then you need to define all the undefined methods in God interface if you click add unimplemented methods okay it has given this you are overriding this two methods okay because the interface was having these two methods which were not having the body part so it's not has given the body part as blank now you can implement it okay so I can say here system dot out dot print ln person can run okay and for eating the person can eat okay so I have implemented these two methods let me call them here okay I will use run and I will use eat now it's giving me an error it's saying to change it as static okay we can do it because these are static and it is asking for them to be as static okay No. okay I will call this at later or I will make an object for the class here okay let's remove the static so for showing up use public static void main I will make an object for main class uh, man m is equals to new man okay and I will be using here m dot run and m dot eat okay so I if I implement this interface I need to define this method okay and similarly I can use the man if I run this it would print this okay now let me suppose I want to create woman as well so I will make a class woman okay it will implement God interface okay and now it's saying to implement its method as well okay the woman must implement the abstract method of God interface okay add unimplemented methods okay, let me import import uh, my package godfather interface add implemented methods okay and suppose here I can write woman can't not run faster okay so now you must have understand the power of interface in my god interface I have told that the person can run now how they should run okay man can run faster but the woman cannot so persons can run but how to implement totally depends upon the class which is implementing the god interface okay so this is the concept for interfaces the practical example would be very much when you will be working with the selenium or apm for example selenium says that you can run your test cases on chrome browser firefox browser opera and other browsers okay now 
suppose there is a function open which opens the respective browser if there was no interface then what the Firefox done it has made a function open Firefox for opening the Firefox Chrome has done opening the browser function for opening the browser so for all the five browsers they would have separate functions okay if in my interface I have given that open browser is the function through which you can open a browser so every Opera Chrome or any other f browser will be bound to make the body part for open function that is open browser if it's not clear <laughs> leave it for now when we'll be going with selenium it will be cleared in depth okay I will be explaining more in depth it's just giving you an overview that this is interfaces interfaces don't have body part they are just the skeleton okay which needs to be defined when you are implementing it okay interface have the abstract methods abstract means only the declaration no body part okay thank you